Hello, 6th graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, 7th grade math, section 5.4, Solving Proportions Lesson. Pause while you write the lesson number and title in your math notebook. Pause again while you write today's lesson objective in your math notebook. Today's objective is solve proportions using different strategies. Copy the following key idea into your math notebook. Today's key idea is solving proportions. Method 1, use mental math. Method 2, use the multiplication property of equality. And method 3, use the cross products property. So as you can see, we have covered method 1 using mental math in section 5.3. Today we'll cover methods 2 and 3 using the multiplication property of equality and use, using the cross proper, products property. So today we're going to start with solving proportions using multiplication. Example 1 says solve 5 sevenths equals x over 21. Our first step is always to write the proportion or write the problem. So we do that and then this is just like solving any other problem for a variable. So we see that 21, x is divided by 21, so we use inverse operations, which means we're using multiplication, and we multiply both sides of our equation by 21. So that leaves us an x on the right-hand side, and we can do some quick cross-canceling over on the left-hand side, and our 7 goes into itself once, and it goes into 21 three times, and 3 times 5 equals 15, and so that leaves us an x equal to 15, so the solution is 15. Now let's look at the on your own problems. Remember to write these in your notebook, and if you need to pause to catch up, that's just fine. So we are going to use multiplication to solve the problem. So since w is divided by 6, we are going to multiply both sides by 6 to get that w by itself. So 6 over 1, that cancels out, so that leaves us with a w on the left. And we can cross cancel, so 3 goes into 6 three, two times, this is Tim's, and 3 goes into 9 three times over here. And 6 times 2 equals 12, and 3 times 1 equals 3. So w equals 12 divided by 3, which equals 4. And number 2 says 12 tenths equals a over 15. So now we need to multiply both sides by 15. So we are going to cancel out the 15s on the right. That leaves us with an a on the right. And cross cancel. 5 goes into 10 twice, and it goes into 15 three times. So now when we multiply, we have 3 times 12, which equals 36 on the top of our fraction, and 1 times 2, which equals 2 on the bottom of our fraction. So 36 divided by 2 equals 18, which equals A. So our solution is 18. On number 3, we're going to have, we need to multiply both sides by 6, and so that cancels out on the left, and we have y equal to something, and we're going to cross cancel, 2 goes into 4 2 times, 2 goes into 6 3 times, and then we multiply, 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 1 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 equals 3, so y equals 3. Now we're going to look at our next method of solving proportions, which is solving proportions using the cross products property. So let's look at example A, x over 8 equals 7 tenths. So what we do is we cr cross multiply, so 10 times x and 8 times 7. So 
x times 10 equals 10x, and 8 times 7 equals 56. So then when we solve for x, we get x equals 5.6, so the solution is 5.6. Letter B says 9 over y equals 3 over 17. So again, we cross multiply 9 times 17 and y times 3. So 9 times 17 equals 153 and y times 3 is 3y. When we solve for y, we divide both sides by 3 and we get 51 equals y, so the solution is 51. Let's do the on your own problems. Again, copy these into your notebook and be sure you're understanding what we're doing. So number 4, we're going to cross multiply. 28 times 2 equals 56. And 7 times x equals 7x. And then we're going to divide both sides by 7 to solve for x. 56 divided by 7 equals 8, so x equals 8. Moving on to number 5, y times 12 equals 12y, and 6 times 5 equals 30. When we solve for y, we have y equal to 30 twelfths and we simplify that so we're going to divide the top and the bottom of that the numerator and the denominator both by 6 so we have 30 divided by 6 equals 5 and 12 divided by 6 equals 2 so that's 5 halves which is equal to 3 and 1 half Number 6 gets a little bit trickier because our denominator is not a single number. So when we cross multiply this direction, we have 6 times 40 equals 240. And when we cross multiply that direction, we have to use the distributive property. So we'll do that in just a second. Let's write it out first. 15 times z plus 1. We have 240 equals 15 times z equals 15z plus 15 times 1 equals 15. And then we need to first subtract 15 from both sides. So we now have 225 equal to 15z. So then we divide both sides by 15, and that gets the z by itself, which is what we're looking for, and 225 divided by 15 equals 15. So our solution is z equals 15. We're moving on now to our real life application. The graph at the right shows the toll, which is letter Y, due on a turnpike for driving X miles. Your toll is $7.50, so that's how much you paid. How many kilometers did you drive? So the point, 107.5 on the graph shows that the toll is $7.50 for driving 100 miles. So that's right here and your job is to convert 100 miles to kilometers. So we're going to do two methods here. First method is we're going to convert using a ratio. So we are going to kind of cross multiply here. We've got 100 miles times 1.61 kilometers. We got that conversion factor from the back of our book. And it's 1.61 kilometers over one mile and we can cross cancel the miles just like we cross cancel numbers and then we've got 100 times 1.61 equals 161 kilometers so you drove about 161 kilometers method two is we convert using a proportion 
so we let x be the number of kilometers equivalent to 100 miles. So we put 1.61, and that's kilometers, over one mile. And remember, when you're using a, a proportion, you have to have your units the same on both sides. So we've got kilometers over miles and kilometers over miles on the same on both sides of the equal sign. And that's equal to x over 100. So we wrote our proportion using 1.61 kilometers is about equal to 1 mile. And then we just multiply 1.61 times 100 equals 1 times x. So we were cross multiplying, like so. And when we solve that, it comes out to 161 equals x. So you can use either one of these methods to solve. So let's do the on your own problems. And I'm going to work these on the side because there isn't much room at the bottom of my screen. And you be sure to do these in your notebook. It says write and solve a proportion to complete the statement. Round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So it says 7.5 inches equals a certain number of centimeters. Okay, so I have set up our proportion and I used the back of the book to find our conversion factor. And I went with one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So you have to be very careful and think about are you going from inches to centimeters or centimeters to inches. Since we're going from, cent from inches to centimeters, I need to find out how much one inch equals in centimeters. So I set up our proportion with one inch equals 2.54 centimeters, and that's equal to 7.5 inches equals x centimeters. So then we cross multiply. So I have x inches equals 7.5 times 2.54, which equals 19.05 centimeters. Be sure you understand that and be sure you write it in your notebook. And we're going to move on to number 8, which is 100 grams, be sure you understand that that G is for grams, not gallons, and we're converting that to ounces. So again, I have set up our proportion. I used the back of the book to find out how much one gram equals, and it equals 0 0.035 ounces. So we cross multiply, and we end up with X equals and we multiply by 100, so we just need to move our decimal point to the right, and it comes out to 3.5 ounces. And we're going to move on to number 9, and we're going to set up our proportion again. So I found from the back of the book that 1 liter equals 1.06 quarts. So I'm going to cross multiply. That gives me x equals 2 times 1.06, which is a total of 2.12 quarts. Now be sure you have that in your notebook because I am going to erase so that I have room for number 10. So I have set up our number 10 problem as a proportion and 3.28 feet over 1 meter, which I looked up from the back of the book, equals x feet over 4 meters. So I go ahead and cross multiply 4 times 3.28 equals 13.12 and that is equal to x or 1x. So now we know that, that x equals 13.12 feet. I'm sorry. Yes, feet. That's right.
Please be sure you are prepared with your notes, vocabulary, and other work from the flipped lesson all completed and be prepared with any questions and, of course, a good attitude.